Welcome to episode two of Verzo's podcast, and with me once again is the legend that is Proggy. Ah, oh, there's a problem with that. What's that? I went in Plum Centre yesterday yep. with a bag of bits that I didn't know what to do, and I said, um, are you a legend at plumbing? And he said, I can't be. You have to be dead to be a legend. Well, that's, um, that's, that's a good debate to have. It is. So do you have to be dead to be a legend? I think so, because there's too many people willy-nilly throwing it around, aren't so they? So you just days? said the, the legend that is Andy Proctor. You've made me change my mind straight away. Exactly. That's how good you are. Are you going to change your mind about the Eagles, how to California? Absolutely not. No, OK. Because but the yeah. guy who wrote it yeah. is dead, so he's a legend. Yeah, but he don't, no, just because you died don't make you a legend. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? Yeah. You've actually got to be of a certain sort of calibre. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, um, how do you think episode one went, mate? I did, yeah. I, uh, I listened to it... The next night when I was at home doing the kitchen that's been going on for ever since we uh, left last week, uh, two weeks ago. But um, yeah, I think it went well. I had a few messages from people. And one that was lovely was that someone sent me a message. The Dunnett Haulage truck has just gone past my window and I now know what it is. That's brilliant. That is nice, isn't it? So just two blokes having a chat. So <laughs> I now know Chris Dunn's lorry. Gogsy's missus overheard it and said it sounds like two drunk blokes in a pub talking in the corner. Funny enough, I was about to say, I bumped in, well, I didn't bump into them, they shouted me over. Oi, that yeah. was Goggins. Yeah, yeah. And his good lady. Yeah. They were on their way to Saigon, so they were on the way home from Saigon, and right. I was on my way there. And he was on about it, he wants to know about the naughty bus. Yeah, I think, yeah, we, we need to talk about what you're able to disclose about that, because it did involve quite a, you know... A bit naughtiness. <laughs> Well, I think you went to court, didn't you? <laughs> well, that's it. I was, my, um, my, the former, the former Verzo did. Ah. When, when I was um, young and stupid. I and understand. Naive. Now I'm just old and stupid. But more <laughs> wiser. Wiser. Wiser, yeah. more risk averse. Yes. More I, risk averse. I know the difference between right and wrong now. Do you? Yeah. Okay, that's good. Yeah. We've, we've developed something, that's good. We have, yeah. Yeah. 51 years old and grown up, or growing up. Yes, that's nice to see. Yeah. So um, I've, I've, I've seen on Facebook, but only two days ago, that you might have got your own radio show. Well, it's, um, yes, it seems, seems to have developed. Um, Rob, Rob Dunger from Flickstone Radio invited me along. Yeah. So I, I, went, I went to see, and I thought I was just going to be sitting there watching him um, twiddle, twiddle the knobs, so to speak. Um, but he actually got me in the chair and interviewed me. Okay. So we had um, a little section all about me, which, which was nice, you know. <laughs> Yeah, talk about me. Because you like talking about you, oh, don't you? Yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah. And um, so we talked about my, my weight loss this year. We talked about my podcasts, um, the people I'm working with on podcasts. How it's got a lot better in the last week. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> fact that without Procky Proctor, <laughs> what would we be talking about me having my own, potentially having my own radio show? So are you going to have your own show? Well, I'm, going, I'm meeting Rob again in two weeks to discuss it. Yeah. And it's looking 90, 99% certain that. I will be moving in that direction, yeah. So, can, can you record it at home, or do you have to go in there and twiddle the knobs, as you said? Well, Rob does a lot of his from home, but he's got he's got all the settings. He, he, he's a man who's been in the industry right. years, and he's very good at what he does. Make, he makes it look easy. Right. Um, but he's got all the, all the bits and pieces at home. I think, whilst I'm learning the ropes and getting started, yeah. I'll go into the studio. Yeah, why not? Uh, Phil, with the ambiance. Yes. Yes. And um, do you know where it is? No. It's in the old dentist hut at Corson School. Is it? Yeah. So when he invited me in there, I thought he was going to pull my teeth out. <laughs> <laughs> I've never went to Corson. Oh, no. Yeah, so the, there was a sort of a prefab building. Right. That, that was the dentist, and I did wonder what it is now, and it's finished <laughs> already. <so radio. laughs> good, good. Okay, so do you know what the content... You must have been, you know, musing over what you think it's going to be. Uh, yeah, what I'll be doing probably is... Um, Speaking to people in Felix, they've got a story to tell. Okay. Um, us on the po- we'll keep the podcast going because I think it's brilliant, and we'll do the short, snappy stuff. We'll yeah. be sort of irreverent, bit of fun, but the more long, long, drawn out, serious stuff. I'll yeah, stick, yeah. stick on the radio. People who the W I. Yeah, people have fought back. You know, fought back from cancer and survived, and stories like that. Yeah. Yeah, you know, people. People are. The serious stuff. Yeah, hopefully you want to hear sort of that sort of so a bit yeah. of inspiration. Yeah, cool. So yeah, that, that's the idea. I'm, that's the sort of way I'll be taking it and uh, try and play the Eagles Hotel California every night. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of that, uh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Doom, yeah, doom. Doom. yeah. <laughs> Good, good. So what else you might do this week, mate? So um, 
we talked about uh, chip shops and what's good around Felixstone. Mm. Now, unintentionally, I've reviewed three places to eat. So, just, uh, we haven't got a kitchen at home, you see. Mm. So I've been having a, a decent meal during the day because there's not a lot going on, at home, going on at home in the evening. So, um, I parked in town. I thought, wherever I park, I'll try and find somewhere to get something to eat. The Spud Hut. Do you know where that is? Yes, that's... Um Right next to King's, the um, key place, isn't it? And, and the bed and the bed shop where their nice sausage rolls are. That you... That's the one. Yeah. Right. So I went in, check a potato with chilli, please. And they've done it perfectly. Isn't it really frustrating when you go to someone that does a specific thing and they can't even get it right? Yeah. And they did. That was absolutely lovely. I went to the cliff tops and ate it. See, for me, it's a little bit unfortunate because I've um, I've heard good things about it, and I, I think the lady who's taken it over is called Karen. Right. It? Yeah. Um, I don't like jack potatoes. Don't you? No. Ah. Oh. So. Um, that don't work for you then. Don't does work it? for me. No. But I'm pleased that um, she's getting good reviews because I've yeah. seen it on Facebook right. people are sharing it, and yeah, you know, it looks really nice, but it's just not for me. But it's, it's, it was everything. It was the nice cardboard carton, so yeah. it wasn't that polystyrofoam stuff. Plus, uh, wooden knife and fork. Oh, that was, that was beautiful. Thing of beauty. Yeah. And then... Um, What's he had with it? Who? Tuna, you say? Chili. Chili. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then... Uh, <laughs> this does sound like two old boys talking in the pub, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then I went down a viewpoint. Yeah. The cafe there, overlooking the water. Sat outside. That was lovely. But, nah, it's all right. It was kind of school dinnery. Is that the new build or the... Or the cabin that, uh, the container that sells teas and coffees and no that. no the, the new build where yeah. you sit down proper seats and that mm. it was alright it was nice it looked very meaty pie yeah but it was still from 663 or whatever I think yeah. they didn't make it on site doesn't, it doesn't jump out with you does it no no it's uh, yeah I know what you mean it, it's formulaic it, it's a formulaic cafe it, yeah. it such a thing and then I went to the Fludges one evening very nice in there isn't it yes yeah yeah that's my brother's um Pub restaurant of choice. Okay. Badgers. Yeah, burger and chips, and there was also a couple of beef curries consumed, and they both said it was hot enough that it had a bite. Yeah. You know, whoever made it would take a punt, because very often they'd go on the safe side, don't they? Yeah. It's but very no. mild, but yeah. Yeah, there is lovely places to do stuff around Felix, though, definitely. Yeah. Um, you, you touched on um, chip shops. Yeah. And um, I think this podcast is going to find the top three <laughs> chip shops in Felix, though. Do you think? I think so, yes. I did count out that we had 11 <laughs> chip shops in town. So, <laughs> so on the Facebook page, is that where people leave their comments? Yep. If you, yeah, if you look for Verzo's podcast page on Facebook, there's a little bit on there about the chip shops. Now, it's caused a little bit of a debate because um, someone recommended the Mariners. And I said... That's not a chip shop. I said, whilst it's fantastic in there, great food, it's not a chip shop. No, he can't. No. There has to be a traditional chip shop where they sell chips. It's the main thing with chip fish and sausages and stuff. Just basic, you know. Do you know Ben Cowan? Do you know Ben Cowan? Yeah. He has, I think, a, is it five, five Savaloys and chips when he goes to chip shop? That's outrageous. That is outrageous. Not only that, it's doing my numbers OC dinner. Why don't he have four or six? Why have to have an odd number? Oh, this gets worse. I've got a problem about that at all. <laughs> Have you not heard of... Per- okay. Did we talk about sausage and mash on the last podcast? Don't think so. Be honest. I can't remember we did. Right, so don't... don't and Anyone listening as well, okay? If you have sausage, mash and veg, how many sausages do you have? Has to be four. I have two. Two's fine because it's even... But no, people <laughs> at work, they're like, what, 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 two? No one has two, apparently. I'd go with four. Yeah, three and four has been the answer. But I don't like mash. Don't you? Yeah. Do you like anything? I do, but, see, it stems from when I was at school, and they served up the mashed oh. potato, there were lumps in it, and I used to be sick. So, <laughs> and, uh, so I won't have mashed potato, and jacket potato is similar to that in, yeah. in a bit. Okay, so, yeah. The only potatoes I eat are boiled ones that don't fall to bits, but they have to be soft in the middle. Right. Otherwise, they're hard. That makes me feel yeah. poorly. And chips. So, chips. <laughs> yes. If you've got, so, why is someone saying that the best chips are in the Mariners when surely a chip shop should be able to smash out the perfect chip? Yes. And I think the reason that a chip shop can't do the perfect chip is they don't double cook them, do they? 
Um, to be honest, I don't know how they cook them. As long as I get them and they're hot and they're crispy and they're nice, I don't get them. Yeah. But a pub, don't they do the thing where they put them in one fryer at 150 for like eight minutes and then put it in another fryer at like 220 for three minutes? Oh, some... But the chip shop's a chip shop. Yeah. Surely they'd be better at it. Then they are. But they're not. Oh, well, so some of them, we'll find out. Stick to this podcast and we'll find out because I think we should possibly um, do places that are not fish and chip shops that do chips afterwards in their own little category. But some of them do get on my nerves a little bit where uh, you ask for chips and they give you four big lumps of potato that they say triple chip, put them up like Tetris and say, that's your chips. <laughs> Jenga chips. Jenga, that's it. You Jenga don't want chips. Jenga chips, no, do no, you? No, no, no. Pull the bottom one out and the whole plate falls over. <laughs> so why can't a chip shop make the perfect chip with a big Q out of the door because they're the best chips in town? Why has it got to be a pub that can achieve it? Because pubs know how to cook chips. Chip shops don't. They just shove them in and bung them out the door. <sighs> See, do that, it properly. That, that's a debate we've got to have because you, you go past some chip shops in town and there's queues. Is there? Yeah. Oh. Um, I won't. I won't name any yet until we've done some research and eaten things like that. But there's one on the seafront. And eating things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> next, to, next to the snooker club, there's always a queue. Yes. Lunchtime, known fact. Yeah. So um, if you're a chip shop, and you listen to this podcast, keep out. Look, keep a look out for me because I will be paying you a visit. <laughs> Not all eleven years are in, in the in the same week. I've got to draw it out, otherwise. That's going to be bad for me. I like the way you took that role on yourself. Yeah, I, I, I snatched it, didn't I, mate? <laughs> you did? Yeah. <laughs> I, get the, I have to go to dinner at the Fludgers and pay for the expensive yeah, one. Yeah, I know. And I have to go and pay me two quid for a portion of chips. And the Fludgers did pour the perfect Guinness for one of the people I was with. Yeah, they? Yeah, he, he doesn't take pictures of food and drink, but he had to take a picture of it because that was that perfect. My, my brother and his wife got married there in the little room to the side, and, right. and it was it was a perfect venue. Was it? For the, yeah, they had perfect food, and it, it was, yeah. So I, I would recommend the Fludgers as a venue if, if you've got something on, and cool. and the bath upstairs is big enough that all four of us got in it. Oh, that's good. Yeah, yes, you got to be. I think I saw the picture. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, I um I, I got on a tangent once again. So I think what we're going to do is just um, wind down a little bit to have a little bit of a break and then we'll come back in full flow once again. I right, hope you enjoyed that little bit of incidental music while Poggy and I had a cup of tea. <laughs> we didn't have a cup of tea, I'm no. lying. So mate, Trimmy Treat of mine seems to have um, yeah. taken off the... I actually saw hashtag Trimmy Treat of mine the other day on Twitter. And... Um, Goggins saw me in town as um, he mentioned it and said the sequel would never come out. Yeah, it can't really. I think I think really, um, I said too much on the other in the first podcast. Well, Nick Curtis commented on um, on the on the Facebook said that um, he hopes that loose lips don't cost lives. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can't be drawn on it, really. I mean, I, I, I really think I, I said too much in the first first podcast. I, I actually thought that there was going to be a bit more anger from a few of the Trimley boys, but that was quelled, quashed, and I think we just need to move on, really, from it. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll try again next week. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or next fortnight, whenever it is. Next fort, fortnightly. Um, just across the way from the Trigger Mines, you can see the um, the the new build the. Felixstowe High School or Felixstowe School, Felixstowe Academy, whatever they call it. Right. And um, I, I popped around there to um, do my little radio interview the other day. Yep. And had to come through the old school. And all that's standing there is the is the sports hall. Is that right? So the whole all well is gone. Yeah, it's just just green grass now, and all all, all like a prison fence around it. And um, so they where them um, where the sports hall is and the Concrete tennis courts that was in front of the um, yeah, they're they're still there. Um, the was cri- the ghost of Mr. Spanton still hanging around? He was there. He he said, "Versey, you boy." I thought, "Oh dear, I'm in trouble again, Mr. Spanton." He um, well, was it was Miss Moss really a rally driver? She, she yes. She, was she? Yes, she was. Yeah. Um, I just thought that was the way she roared in the school. No, she um, I I think I'll see her one day. Right. Um, 
because um, the teacher had picked on me once again and thrown me out of his class. Well, just for picking on me. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, and, he'd done nothing wrong. As, as I, yeah, as, as, I think it might have been Mr. the aforementioned Mr. Spanton. Right. Uh, he, he tried to um, get me to draw a church from distance, and I was just, oh, I ain't doing this. <laughs> so he told me to go and see Miss Moss, so I, I did. And we just had a chat about our rally driving. What was the... Indian science teacher that used to balance on the tables. Mr. Maiden. Mr. Maiden, he used to do that thing with his hands on the table, his elbows and his knees sort of thing, and did this balance and act. Yeah, he was... Um, didn't He never taught us much, but he'd let us get away with stuff. <laughs> A bit like Mr. Garnet in the geography. No, he, he was my worst teacher of all time. I, I loved him, I thought no, he was brilliant. He was my form teacher, Oh. and he, um, he told me my name was James. Okay. So I said, no, it's Jamie, it's actually on my birth certificate. I bought my birth certificate in the show. Because <laughs> um, I'm quite a bit anal right now. Yeah, you are, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but he still insisted on calling me James. Okay. So I started calling him Colin. <laughs> <laughs> um, he said, that's not my name. And I said, you know how it feels now. Like <laughs> so for two years, he was my form teacher. We never got on. No. And, um, yeah, he, he he would call me James and I'd say, OK, Colin. And that was it. I remember in science once, we had some jelly that we had to grow in a Petri dish. Yeah. So you set it off one week, come back the following week, and it was the cubes of jelly, right? So I obviously ate the jelly, and a few of the others had. And then someone over there said, Sir, what happens if we eat the jelly? Don't, 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 I'm gonna, don't talk to me about that stuff that grows on the jelly. Okay, he said, you are right. No. <laughs> he said to me, so the, over there, <laughs> you're going to go. <laughs> yeah, I'm so, right. so anyway, over there, he said, what happens if we eat the jelly? And the teacher said, don't be so stupid, boy, it's poisonous. If you eat that jelly, you will be banned from doing science for the rest of your life. And me and Crispin went, can I go to the toilet, sir? And he went, off you go. And we both went in the toilet and went, what do we do? What do we do? We've eaten poisonous jelly. <laughs> it's gone all right flat. Was that Mr Jackson? No. No. I can't remember. Bloke with, ah, his glasses were that thick that he could look in his glasses, see behind him, and see what was going on in the back of his head. That's quite dangerous for a science teacher because you might start setting fire to stuff. Magnesium in there. We, set... did, we did a magnesium experiment. Yeah. Oh, Everyone um, took some home. I, I'm going I'm to name him because he was a naughty boy. Gary Durrant. Uh, Gary Durrant was a naughty boy. Yeah. He turned the gas taps on. Yeah. And um, set light to them. Yeah. And there was a girl called Louise Dyer. Don't know. Um, oh, that name just popped into my head for 30 odd years and her hair went up in flames. <laughs> <laughs> the other one was turn the socket off, put your screwdriver or something in the top to push the earth pin down so you could get both live and neutral exposed, put a pair of scissors in it, a pair of metal scissors, yeah. and then turn it on. Of course, it used to blow the scissors apart, didn't it? Brilliant. Yeah. You know the um, filings that you put on a bit of paper and you get the magnet underneath and move the filings yeah. around and you weren't allowed the magnet to go near the filings? Right. Guess who put the magnet in the box of filings? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was me. Probably. That, that was a clean up job, wasn't it? Yeah, that was me. <laughs> um, also, I was in with Gary Darren as well. Again, see, I think he led, led me on a bit. Yeah. Um, we was in biology and we were cutting up frogs. Yeah. And I put my cut up frog down his shirt. Right. And he cried. Did he? We well, didn't cry, but he, he, he didn't have a good day. He weren't happy about it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Science was fun because you could. They kind of took more risks, didn't they? They'd have explosions it, and stuff. It was. It was actually um, bad, really, to allow us who mm. of a certain disposition. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Confidence. To, yeah. To to let loose of them things. Yeah, and that we were near chemicals that we wouldn't be allowed with now. Yeah, I'm surprised we didn't burn the school down. My wife went to a very strange school. It was a rural school, and she actually got the best chicken plucker award. <laughs> what are they doing plucking chickens at school? I said, and I still say to this day, that was probably slave labour, and that was the start of burning Matthew's chicken factory. It probably was. I went to a school with a boy who done something similar to a chicken that rhymed with plucking. Yeah. But we'll leave it there, because we won't we keep was, our PG was, rating. That was such a rubbish joke. It was, wasn't it? Yeah, it's bad. I shouldn't should have been bothered. <laughs> and and I, as I don't do anything, it's got to stay in probably. <laughs> I can I can still see the layout of all the school and how it was. And yeah. I think it was Carl Folly 
had the test key for the fire alarms. Okay. And they put the brand new fire alarm system in, but it had this little wedge shaped key that you could just go underneath the call point and go, bring, yeah. and, wow, wow, and make it go off and then pull the key out. So people, oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, boy in my class didn't need a key. No? Just hit it. Did he? Yeah. Yeah. It's not wise, is it? Yeah. But yeah, I, I remember the. Um, it was the English and Math. Lower, lower. It was English and Math, wasn't it, at first? And you go around at a sort of um, geography. Up top was history. It always was in my day. And then at the very top, you'd, you'd go through the doors that would. You'd go through to this sixth form bit or down down the stairs into the into the higher school. And when, then the other end, past um, Miss. You, you had Miss Brewley's office. And then Mr. Wilkes' office down through the stairs and down that through end, the science, yeah. the science lab. And the library. library. Yeah. It was a bit weird. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> uh, school was <laughs> school was a very <laughs> school was a very strange place, wasn't it? I um, we met myself and Robert Double. We worked out that um, when you start a computer up, it looks for a file called autoexec.bat. Yeah. Whatever you put in there is the boot options. Okay. So we went in the server room and we may have changed the file that it looks for when it starts up the computers. And we put a pornographic kind of uh, very clunky image on it of two people on the beach having... Yeah. Very clunky, okay, very like 80s, late 80s. And then <laughs> Mrs. Del Grano stood up and oh, she went... I've not heard for long years. Yeah, Mrs. Del Grano stood up and went... Right, everybody, log in with this username and this password, and they all hit enter. And this pornographic po picture of two people at it popped up all around the room. <laughs> but then, about two weeks later, Mr. O'Brien called me in, and he said, "Would you like to be do sit form yeah. and be network manager for Orwell and Deben? Because you clearly know what you're doing." <laughs> And I said, yes. Did they know that it was you who put it yeah, 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 yeah. That's why he, you know, yeah. he worked out who it was. I thought, yeah. well, if he's smart enough to do that. A typical poacher town gangkeeper pop. There you go. Yeah. But I went out with my dad and I said, I've got a chance to do sick form, be network manager for Orwell and Deben. And he went, you're not doing that. You're going out and getting a job. Well, I suppose late 80s, that was the thing. Not really. <laughs> I think my dad just wanted an electrician. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Um, in, when I was computer studies, it was, I suppose, 84, eight, might have been 83, 84, and we had one one computer to begin with. I think it was an old BBC. And um, I mentioned him in the first podcast. I mentioned again, Jeremy Ward. He was he was the, he was the main man on the computer. Yeah. He knew, he knew what he was doing. I was lucky if I, I used to be able to do 10 print Jamie, 20 go to 10. And yeah. I'd have my name down the Leave screen. it running in carries. And, and yeah, tell people I was a computer programmer. Do you know, I think Jeremy Ward ended up writing the software that was the welcome board when you drove into the Port of Felix, though, with all the labels and ships coming in there. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, he was very, very good. I'm, I'm friends with him on Facebook, I'll have to tag him in this podcast until yeah. he gets a mention. <laughs> yeah, I think he's abroad now, isn't he? No, his brother's abroad, and Jeremy is in Basingstoke, I think. Oh, okay, you did say that last week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, that's a little... All well's gone. Yeah, that's a shame, really, because I, I, I know we, we talk about All Well Read Demon and All Well Being Better, and it was. Yeah. But we, we because we never went to Demon, we don't have anything to compare to. All we can compare is the people that went there, so... I went in there as an adult to help them with Raspberry Pis and programming and stuff, and I had a couple of meetings with them. It was very weird. It was like a square with a middle bit that you could... Like a courtyard in the middle. Yeah. It's just very strange. I, I went past there the other day and it's all boarded up because they're knocking it down. And there, there was like a little house left. I don't know where that little house was. <laughs> if, if anybody from Devon is listening to two of all high school's finest exponents do their podcast, yeah. then please let us know what that building is at Devon that's left. Just a little house? Yeah. Little, I think it's got a little clock on there. When you say little house, do you mean like... Play like, house? Yeah, not, not little house on the prairie. Little prairie house or big house? No, it's Probably a big. It's a, it's a big structure. For humans. Yeah. Okay. But I don't know if it's a house or if it, if it was the caretaker's mess room or I don't know what it is. But okay. it's got. I think it's got a little clock on the on the roof. <laughs> I, I might be making it all up, Froggy. You might have a dream. <laughs> yeah. So if anyone knows what this little house is, let us know. Well, Can well, you remember trains going down the beach station road? Yes. Can you? Yeah. 
I think. See, that would be fantastic if there was trains that could take people to the beach. Um, working in the industry that moves freight, I'd say... No chance. No chance, because it would reduce the amount of trains my right. company could take out of the port. Mm. That's, that's a very selfish attitude. Well, I think it's called <laughs> industry and commerce. <laughs> yeah, but it pays, pays my way, so I don't know. Um, yeah, would they use it? I know, but it'd just be like the seafront thing that'd help perk it up. But it obviously yeah. went for a reason because it weren't. Yeah, it weren't being used, and uh, you know when people post pictures from way back on Felix, Day, and it's great to look at them. Mm. Bring it back, you know. They say bring it back, and that's what they say. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They're not bringing anything to the debate really. There's mm. debate reason reasons why yeah. we lost these things. Yeah. It's how many um how many trains are there in and out of Felix though that serve the port a day? Um, you put me on the spot now, and if people I work with listen to this and I get it wrong, I'll be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> um, I think there's currently 37. Really? Mm. That's a lot of boxes and a lot of weight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Environmentally, it's great. Yes. Better than trucks. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Very good. Should we have a little break? I think we will, mate. That done well, there. Here we go, part three, Proc. Yeah. Fly by again. It, um, last, last Sunday, me and the wife um, went shopping. And That's we, quite a grown-up thing to say, isn't it? Me and the wife. Yeah. It should be the wife and I, really, but yeah, it is. Okay. Having, having a wife is... Yeah. Yeah. It takes some getting used to, doesn't it? it? It's nice. Yeah. As you say, it's... We, we talk on here about what we used to get up to when we were kids and be a bit of naughtiness and that, and now we're fully-fledged adults, mate. We're, we're wives and... Yeah. Well, I was going to say children. You've got... you. I've got animals. <laughs> I um, I had, to, I had to give someone a lift earlier, and I was talking about years ago when taxis had radios. Yeah. And if your mate went past the other way in a taxi, you'd say to the driver, "Can I use your radio?" Yeah. You go, "Yeah, help yourself," and you pick up and go, "Yeah, Pilky, Pilky, are you on channel?" <laughs> I mean, if you'd hear him, sort, you know, you'd have to go, "Can I?" Yeah, help yourself. Yeah, Proggy, what are you doing? Well, where are you going? Home. I'm on my way down. All right, I'll come back. And we used to use the radios and the taxis to talk to each other. Yeah. And the lad with me went, well, why didn't you ring him? I went, because we didn't have phones. And it was a, it was a what? Oh, he, what do you mean? We didn't have mobile phones. Well, how old are you? <laughs> I was like, oh, God. You know? Well, I never had a house phone until, until I was about 14, 15. So if I wanted to speak to a mate, I'd have to get 2p, because that's how much it costs for a yeah. call, get 2p and go all the way round to Wadgate Road from Grange Farm Estate yeah. and make a call. And nine times out of ten, I'd have to stand outside because some bloke would be arguing with his wife or girlfriend yeah. on the phone. Then I'd be knocking on the door, he coming up, and he's waving his fist at me. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, Gary can wait. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back home again, I'm not having this. I don't want to go and play football with him anyway. Yeah. Do you remember doing um, reverse charge call? Yep. You could dial, couldn't you? could find the operator on 100. So I'd like to make a reverse charge call to 272173. You'd hear them ask them, wouldn't you? We've got a reverse charge call for you from that phone box in the Maystone Road. Yes, I'll accept the charges. And then you go, hello, what do you want? Can you come pick me up? See, what me and a couple of mates have done, <laughs> we'd prank call someone, right? but reverse the charges first. <laughs> they'd actually pay for their being pranked. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> But again, I'll probably best not tell you what we used to. No, okay. Uh, we'll leave it so anyway, you said you were out on Sunday with your yeah, wife. Yeah, and uh, we saw the lions put the Christmas tree up. Oh, okay. And that's, that's always, always a nice. I'm not overly a big fan of Christmas, but it's, it's nice to see the lions do 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 what they do and put the Christmas what tree do, up. What do the lions do? I'm not sure. They put a Christmas tree up, don't they? And do the lights on it? No, that's Charlie Philpot. Well, he didn't. Well, hang on, Trimley or Felix though? Felix, Felixstowe Town Centre. Ah, I'm talking about Trimley. So. Well, did you know the Christmas tree in Trimley? Yeah. It was always Charlie Philpot that wired the lights up for it. Yeah, good, good sparky, Charlie. He was, yes. He's a lovely guy as well. Yeah. One of the, one, one of the, one, we haven't mentioned a legend this time round. Okay. Maybe that's one for future. We'll, we'll yeah. revert back because I've got some stories about Charlie. Have you? Yeah. So when, I, when we had the kitchen business in Felixstowe, he used to do some electrics for us. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He was a good, good guy. Mm. But um, he used to do the electrics for the Christmas tree every year at Trimley. And I remember Justin's dad was Father Christmas one year, <laughs> right? And he's in the tent on the chimney green. I don't know why I'm laughing. I don't know the story. <laughs> Have you met Len, Justin's dad? Yes, a oh, long time ago. He's proper... He's not a legend, he's a character. And yeah. uh, he had this kid sitting on his knee, 
And this kid came up, <laughs> tugged on his beard thing. He went, <laughs> I'm going to pull your beard like I pulled your wife. <laughs> Is that kid said? Yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Rosemary, Rosemary, get this boy off me. Did you hear what he just said? <laughs> So the Lions, what do they, I don't know what the Lions... I know they're like a rotary club type charitable group of people. Now, yeah, I'm going to show my naivety and maybe ignorance. Yeah. I just thought they put the Christmas lights up every no, year. No, they do more than that because they fund defibrillators and stuff, don't they? And I don't really know, actually. We need to get... We need to find out. Yeah, we need to do some work on, on the Lions. Guess <laughs> <laughs> get a lion in. Yeah. Yeah. He nearly roared. I was about to roar then like a lion. I don't know why. How patronising would that be? No, but I was I was about to actually jump out of my chair <laughs> and go and do it. But I'm no, not. I don't. Um, Doesn't work on radio. And, and then I'm actually I've got a lion bar now as well. I don't really eat chocolate. Do they still make them? Uh, I don't know. I don't look for chocolate really. No, I don't. I dished the Kit Kats out at work today. Yeah. Saw a four pack. Took them back. One on each desk. Got me done. Excellent. Um, yeah, so we need to find out what Lions do. I know they're a charity organisation and they do a lot of work, but it's not an area that I've actually ever been involved in, so I suppose I haven't paid a great deal of attention. Well, you need to research. But, exactly. Gonna, you, you need to research, because you're going to be mayor one day, aren't you? Well, you say that, Proc. <laughs> but with, with, the, with the podcast, Champion of the People of Felix Doe, um, the, the, the possibility of the radio show, these are the sort of people that... Yeah. We, we need to get involved yeah, and definitely and push them out because I think you should save the lions for your radio show. Get them on. Get yeah. Get someone in. Tell them what tell them what it is. Yeah, I hope one of them's called Lenny. <laughs> <laughs> I've got I've got a bit of a dilemma at the moment. Yeah. Well, I've got a defibrillator, my own defibrillator. Right. And the last two or three days, it started beeping because it's got a low battery. Mm -hmm. And they're about two hundred thirty quid. So basically, I've got to pay 230 quid for a battery for something I'm probably not going to use myself. And if someone does roll over and I use it, I can't then say, well, not be funny, mate, but yeah. 230 quid for the battery. Well, if anybody listens has got any spare def defib batteries, <laughs> they'll probably have one. It doesn't work like that. No, it doesn't work like that. You never know. What we need is like... A USB one. Or like, remember Swap Shop? We've, yeah. You know, so you'd, you'd swap a, a Sibutio with no balls for two darts. Yeah. We need that. That sort of thing. Yeah. But with defibrillator, yeah. what do you swap? Flat, flat defibrillator battery for a... Fully charged one. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be helpful, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So we need to get the lions, need to sort that out. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll make, it, make it my aim to... Yeah, find one. Yeah. Cool. So, um, yeah, I think that's been a, a, nice, a nice episode again. Yeah, we've had a laugh, mate. <laughs> we've had a laugh, but then if anybody else will be entertained. Probably, you know, we, we did say that when we start this, we're going to have a structure. Yes. I think we still need one. I don't think, <laughs> or do we? We haven't had a structure today and um, we've, we've gone on for 35, 40 minutes. Or I think if, um, if people could subscribe to either YouTube, Spotify, Anchor or Apple, is it on? It's on Apple, yep. And also Google Podcasts. Yeah. So subscribing means you get all the updates, and we see the data then, don't we? We do. And yeah. I think if anyone likes what we've done, and they know how to copy and paste the link on their own Facebook and social media, because the more traction it gets, the more interested we'll be in doing it. Yeah, and share it around. And, and by all means, um, on especially on the, the hosted podcast, like your Apple or your Spotify, please drop a comment in, right. because we can go higher up their okay. rankings and get yeah get higher up in, in anyone's list so people chatting on there puts our ranking up to be yeah. found by so if you like us please pop a comment in even if you do things that you're not quite yep. like you know because any feedback is feedback isn't yeah, it yeah definitely yeah um, we so don't yeah. want to offend anyone no so we'll share it on all the usuals the Facebooks the Twitters etc but by all means please subscribe please comment please share and we'll love you forever won't be a problem we will. Right, I think that's about it. So if you we'll see, if you see someone with that a smile, give him yours. Yeah, that, that, and that is actually a true thing. Just, <laughs> just smile at someone. Some people look at you like, what's he, want? what's he smiling for? It, 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 and I've done that. And I've smiled at people and they think, oh, he's a weirdo. But just keep doing it because yeah. eventually somebody else will smile. Do you know what we did was a good thing at work this week? What's that? Last week. We did a slow cooker. I saw that. Did you? Yeah, I've got a slow cooker. And yeah. that's Katie. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, on that note, let's no, go. No, joking apart, yeah. 
I'm sorry to jump in there. I did see that, and so you, you, you bought a slow cooker in the veg and a bit of meat and popped it on, and the people had a bit of dinner later. Yeah, it was at 88 shed on the docks. We, um, I started at six. Yeah. So um, brought it in, bit of tomato in the bottom, uh, sausages. Um, what was in there? Um, a bit of turnip. Yeah. Carrot. Think potato. Like, you chuck anything really. You can, yeah, yeah. Sauce, mate. Yeah, it tastes nice. And... Um, but one of the one of the handballers did laugh. He said, um, "What's going on now?" I went slow cooker. I said in the names of the people that was for, and he went, "Are you gonna have to cut the veg up into really small bits? So they don't know it's in there." <laughs> <laughs> um, just before we go, I did see a sign outside Deepin High School that said "Slow Children." I thought I got that right. <laughs> anyway, Parky, we must we must go now. We've gone on too long tonight. Probably go. Cheers all. See you soon. Bye. <laughs>